Morning, it's Christo here on Talk TV. We talked about the USA, where I've just returned from, why they are so patriotic, why it is that uh, they seem to get customer service so right, and why it is we seem to get those things so wrong. We'll talk to Dave in a moment, but on the subject of customer service, I've got to talk to you about my car rental in the States, which is like, this is so typical of the UK, right? So has anyone ever dealt with Avis? Avis? Have you ever dealt with Avis? Oh, my God, they're diabolical, right? So I was very organised, because I get very organised when I go on holiday, and I, I, I rented my car. We needed a car for a couple of days, right? And, you know, my mother joined us in Dallas. So on the Saturday, my mother came out and joined us. Yeah, thanks for that, Mum. And um, I was going to pick her up from the airport. So I'd arranged quite meticulously that I was out picking up my car at 1pm on the Saturday, right, to go and get Mum from the airport. And we were going to return it on the Monday after I'd been to South Fork. And I was picking it up from the Avis office, right, in this hotel, right? So I turn up at the Avis office and I get there, I mean, in fairness, I get there about five past one. You know, I'm a few minutes late, but it's fine. And the office closes at one o'clock. And the pickup time that Avis UK arranged for the car was one o'clock when the office was closed. So I get there and the office is closed. And I'm looking at my thing going, and, and it says the opening hours of the office are till 1 p.m. And I look at my thing and it says it's, it's a, a, the pickup is at 1 p.m. So I say, well, the office is closed. So I ring Avis International Customer Service and I say, hi, I've turned up to pick up my car and it's a one o'clock pickup and it's like, you know, a couple of minutes after one and the office is closed. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, the office closes at one. I said, well, why did you rent your pickup of a car at one o'clock if the office closes at one o'clock? Oh, yeah, that was Avis UK. I said, OK, well, great. Well, sorry about that. That's terrible. It was Avis UK. Can you arrange something else? No, 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 no. We're the international helpline, but we can't help you. So it's, well, what am I supposed to do? Oh, yeah, that's, we, we understand your frustration. No, I don't want you to understand my frustration. I need a car. My mother stood at the airport. I need this car. You know, how can you close the office and not leave the key at the hotel? Or, you know, I've done all my check-in. Can you not? No, nothing I could do. I said, OK, well, you've got other Avis offices. I'll, I'll go and pick it up from somewhere else. No, can't do that. We can't access your booking. You have to ring Avis UK. This is their problem. I said, all right, well, well, what? Well, have you got the number? No. I said, OK. Well, I'll ring Avis UK. They're closed. So then, so then, I, then I go to the airport. I so said, I'm just going to go to the airport in a taxi and pick up my mother. Go to the airport. And I go to car rental Avis in the airport. Speak to an American at the airport. This wasn't an American I was speaking to on the phone. Oh, my God, she couldn't have done more. She was outraged at what had happened. She, again, bent over backwards. She transferred my booking. She found me another car. OK, it wasn't as good because it was, you know, last minute at this point. But she couldn't have done more. She was outraged. And then she was fiddling on a computer. She was like this. Right, well, if I do it this way, I can actually get you some money off. And blah, blah, blah. and if we do... Oh, I can get you another $20 back if we do this. Amazing. By the end of it, I thought, my God, OK, as a company, you're absolutely diabolical, Avis, but this lady is amazing. And she was like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. The woman in the hotel, look, I told you. Like, so then I went to the hotel desk when the Avis desk was closed. And I went to the hotel desk. I said, is this desk closed? I said, because I've got a car rental and this is my confirmation. This was on the hotel front desk. I said, the, 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 your Avis office in this hotel, I'm supposed to pick a car up from. And they're closed. And the woman on the front desk was like, oh, my God, that's terrible for you. She said, that's terrible. I said, I know. She goes, I can't believe it. Right, what's your confirmation? She said, I'll ring Avis for you. I said, oh, my God, you don't have to do that. No, I'll ring them. And she said, oh, OK. She said, I can't... She said, then I spoke to them, and it, like I said, they weren't helpful. So I got off the phone to them. I said that they were really unhelpful. I said, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere. She goes, no, 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 no. I'll ring Avis at the airport for you. Hang on, I'll get the number for Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. We'll, we'll ring that office direct. Leave it with me. And then she said, right, I think I can get you a Jeep. Would you be happy with that, or do you want a more compact car? I said, this isn't even your screw-up. And I said, she said, oh, I know, I know, but I can see that you're distressed and this is your holiday. Let me try and help you. Could you imagine in a million years that happening in the UK? In a million years that happening in the UK? <laughs> Absolutely not. Not even her mistake. Nothing to do with her. 
but she just could tell that there had been a mistake made and wanted to help me. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Dave wants to talk about that. Morning, Dave. Good morning, Chris Cove. I mean, what is going on? I, like, I, I, I mean, I know that I'm perhaps I'm being a bit boring with some of my customer service regaling stories this morning, but I, I was blown away by the fact that they just want to help you. They just really yeah. want to help you. No, 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 you're not the first person to tell me that the Americans are very helpful with their customer service. I'll tell you for why. My wife's niece went to America well, a few years ago now, and at a very young age, she had both her legs removed through illness, whatever. Okay. And she's disabled, and she went to America, and she said they could not have been more helpful to her and she really, really did stipulate that and lay it in, you know? Why do you I, think I it is? What, what, what is it that is going on there? Because America isn't perfect. America's got loads of problems. America doesn't have the most perfect education system, doesn't have the most perfect, you know, social cohesion. But why are they getting it right and we're not? What's the difference, do you think? Uh, basically, we have... If you phone up customer service here, you're likely to get a call centre in India or some far-reaching country, and I can't understand them. I can't understand a word they say, which makes me very irate, to say the least. And I end up getting nowhere. All you right, but, but, but also, every story I've given, and I, I get what you're saying about some of the call centres and, and their la being that language barrier, but I'm talking about face-to-face -face customer service. I mean, I'm talking about people uh, right in front of you. You go up in a supermarket and ask someone here in the UK where something is, they look at you like they've asked them for a kidney. I know. You, you, go, you do the same in the US and, you know, they show you, they put it in your basket for you, they take you to the till, they, 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 they couldn't do more for you. Yeah, I know. And what I was going to point out, actually, was uh, customer service at the doctor's receptionist. It's, it's not, I don't know, it's like going through customs. Oh, if we had all the receptionists, doctors receptionists that I've met anyway, if we put them in the home office in charge of the illegal immigration, the asylum seekers, my God, there wouldn't be many get through the net. Well, I tell you something, that's the only place where they were they were really nasty pieces of work was the immigration and... and, 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 and um, you know, what is it called? Homeland security people at the airports. They're the only ones which were were really unhelpful and quite nasty and were in the States. And a part of me was like, well, I kind of get it. I think you need to be like that. I think you actually need to be a little bit um, unfriendly in those roles because that's your job. You're not in that job to make friends. Um, uh, and that was that was the only part of it where I thought, oh, you're you're horrible. You're all absolutely horrible. Well, poss possibly so. I mean, they must get a few, uh, let's say, <laughs> things thrown into them when when you know if your court was trying to get stuff in or. or if your paperwork isn't great. It can't be the easiest job in the world, can no, it? No, but I also just don't think... I think they're impenetrable, if that makes sense. I just think that they they are are not there to make friends or be friendly. They're there to do a job, and that is to protect the US border. And they, they don't care whether you're nice to them, friendly to them. They just care about protecting the border. And, and I think that there's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot to be said for that, actually, because they're actually doing their job as they should be. And, you know... The, the, well, that, put it this way, we could do with that here and now, couldn't we? Well, I, I think that's the point I'm making, actually. They don't... They don't there are certain roles where you shouldn't actually be all nicey-nicey, and that's yeah. probably one of them. I mean, OK, when you're going through security, it'd be nicer if there were, a, you know, cracked a smile now and then, but in general, they, they don't care. They really don't care. Like, at one point... So we queued to get through security to come back from Dallas in Fort Worth Airport, and we'd been queuing for 10 minutes, and then they said, oh, sorry, we're closing this queue, go over there. And yeah. we said... Oh, OK, well, we're queuing for the scanners. We've been queuing for what, quite a while. Don't care. Yeah. Don't go over there. That, 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 they, we've got sniffer dogs over there. We want you all over there. We yeah. want to make sure 
that, 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 that you've all gone through the sniffer dogs because these scanners are taking too long. Go over there. And I yeah. said, uh, 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 go over there. <laughs> they don't take any yeah. claptrap. Christo, I'm old enough to remember the days when police officers, if there was a bit of a fracas anywhere, at a dance or in my youth or, or wherever, South End on Sea with the mods and rockers, the police couldn't wait to get involved. They would steam in there now. Stand back, having their Mars bar. Yeah, they, they, they. There is that, that, that problem, isn't there? Whereas in the states, this you sort of maybe it's because I was a foreigner, but I kind of ended up going, oh, all right, because like you kind of revere them a little bit because maybe because they got guns, you think, well, I'm not going to mess with you, but, but they don't take any of your rubbish, and you know you can't push it with them. So in the end, I said, oh, OK, right, I'll go and queue over there then. And and I had to go through with all the sniffer dogs and everything like that. And and like I say, I think that there is a little bit of me that thinks you've probably got the right idea because they don't care. They, they really don't care. They're not there to make friends. They don't care. I think that's correct. Yeah. And it's the, the correct way to be. Well, in that role, it probably is. Nice to talk to you. That is uh, Dave in Essex. Let's do a couple of the tweets and the texts. Um... John says, Happy Easter. It's nice to have you back. Oh, yeah, it's Easter this weekend, isn't it? So it's because I'm a Greek. This is sort of English Easter. We also have Greek Easter. So the Easter in our household is, 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 is a bit bigger in a few weeks' time. That won't stop me eating my lint bunny when I get home, though, because it's important to keep my British traditions going. Hey, there's a story about that, which I'll tell you about as well in the next hour. Um, there's something strangely comforting about you being back on the box says John. Maybe it's the fact that if you're on our screens, we've not been nuked by Russia. Well, that's nice. Um, it's simple, Christo, when it comes to the state. There is a national identity to build a foundation on. Um, we've allowed ours to be pushed aside and voids will always get filled. Because that's the thing, Den. Because I am keen to point out that the I don't think you can just blame immigration here because America is a nation of immigrants. But somehow they're managing to do it whilst keeping patriotism. Because you, it, honestly, talk to, if you talk to the Mexican chambermaid, probably on the lowest wage in my hotel, but she was a proud American, you know? And I'm sure that that Mexican chambermaid probably doesn't have the greatest life certainly doesn't earn the greatest amount of money, but that Mexican chambermaid was an American. Do you know what I mean? And so they seem to be able to distinguish between the issues that immigrants face, yet still have so some sort of cohesion when it comes to their national identity. And I think on that you're right. And I don't know why seemingly, and maybe I'm wrong, we don't seem to have that here anymore which manifests itself in stories about people being complained about that raise a union flag. But as I tell you now, some of those immigrants that I spoke to in America, um, they they seem to still acknowledge that they're really American, even though they acknowledge the issues that they have in the States. I mean, the girl I was talking about that was bending over backwards, um, she, she was non-white, and, and that's why I ended up getting quite you know, friendly with her. And she was saying, oh, God, I'm American. I was like, and, and she was saying exactly what I'm just telling you. God, America's got loads of problems, but I'm American. You know, I, I defend this country to the hilt, but I understand that things aren't brilliant here sometimes. And there just seemed to be this underlying sense of patriotism that I'm not sure that we have so much here. And it was it was nice to hear actually it was nice to hear someone who was you were able to have an adult conversation with who was able to say yeah america's got this this and this as a problem but i'm still american and i still love it and and that balance 